In the last videos about spark erosion I explored the possibilities that a Wagner hammer offers. The big advantage of these systems is that no control electronics is required. Both the lifting magnets... ...as well as the DC motors simply need to be connected to a voltage source and thus transform any CNC or 3D printer into a machine that can be used to engrave any metal. The next stage of experimentation makes use of a process I call active hammering with a stepper motor controlled by a microcontroller. The stepper motor only moves the electrode wire back and forth. The moving mass is therefore as small as can be. On the stepper motor there is a piece of steel tube with an outer diameter of 10mm, which I roughened with a Dremel so that there is enough friction to move the wire. A ball bearing with an outer diameter of also 10mm serves as the counterpart. This ball bearing is pressed onto the stepper motor roller via a lever and a spring. The wire is guided through breast tubes with an outer diameter of 2mm. Since I use electrode wire with a thickness of only 0.2mm, I crimped the button tube. When crimping, a steel wire with a thickness of 0.5mm prevents the inner diameter of the breast tube from becoming too small. The circuit runs via the lower breast tube and therefore the electrode wire that rubs against the inner wall. There is an inductor in the circuit for mainly two reasons. If the circuit is closed via the workpiece, an induction voltage builds up in the coil which counteracts the external voltage. The current does not increase abruptly but rather slowly. On the other hand, if the electrode wire is lifted and the conductive connection to the workpiece is interrupted, the induction voltage now causes the resulting spark to be maintained for a little longer. The stepper motor is controlled by an ATmega 328 microcontroller with an A4988 stepper motor driver. So that the microcontroller can detect whether the wire is touching the workpiece or not, there is a sensor in the circuit. This can measure currents of up to 30 Amps. The logic of the microcontroller software is quite simple. If the sensor reports that no current is flowing, the wire is moved downwards. However, if a current flows, the wire is moved upwards. Works well, here with a voltage of 3.3 volts. However, there is a problem. If the Z axis of the CNC is moved up, the wire is moved further down until contact is made again. This is practical if unevenness in the workpiece needs to be compensated for, but it means that broken lines cannot be engraved, the wire always remains on the surface. The microcontroller must therefore receive a command as to when to engrave and when not because the CNC only moves to the next starting point. To do this I connected a pin of the microcontroller to a pin of the milling motor on the CNC board via a voltage divider and joined ground of both boards. The plug of the milling motor is removed. This means that only commands for switching the spindle on and off at the start and end points of the lines need to be inserted into the G-code file. Time for a first engraving. The CNC's firmware is still not modified, it works without any feedback from the microcontroller of the hammer. As you can see, the sparks are not very strong under the water jet at a voltage of 3.3 volts. On the finished disc, the engraved lines are very thin and not really deep. The graphic can only be seen in grazing light. The next engraving is done with a voltage of 5V. 
the sparks under the water jet are slightly stronger than before. The lines of the finished engraving are a little deeper, so the graphic can be seen a little more clearly. The first attempt to engrave with 12V failed because my PC power supply switched off, the current was obviously too high. A higher inductance is therefore required, which is why I now force about 3 to 4 times the amount of enameled copper wire through the ferrite core instead of the original 50 turns. Yes, I know that I am most likely far away from the magnetic saturation value of the ferrite core, unfortunately from the wrong side. Be that as it may, my experimental setup at least works now at 12V. The powerful sparks can be clearly seen and heard. The circuit layout designed by the rule of thumb causes the coil to heat up considerably, but the enamel copper wire can withstand the temperature over the 5 minute engraving. However, towards the end of the job, the spark formation becomes less reliable, which could be, among other things, due to the coil temperature being too high. On the finished steel disc we can see that a lot of material has been removed resulting in deep lines. But these are anything but smooth. The hammer frequency should probably be higher, there is a clear need for improvement when it comes to software and electronics. Another source of inaccuracies lies in the mechanics. Here you can see a new piece of 0.2mm tungsten wire under the microscope. And here the same material after the 12V torture. In the next iteration I have to ensure that there is a well defined contact between the feed mechanism and the electrode wire. In the press tube sparks jump uncontrollably onto the wire and cause undesirable erosion of the electrode, even before it touches the workpiece. If you look closely at the roller for the wire feed on the shaft of the stepper motor, you will notice that it appears to push the wire down faster than it could be the case due to the electrode wear. The reason is that the wire is hammered onto the workpiece so hard that visible slippage occurs on the transport roller. This is also no good for the electrode wire. Furthermore, the two steel rollers of the feed mechanism flatten the wire and these shear forces cause it to partially split. A more gentle mechanism for feeding the wire is needed. Let's go back to 5 volts with the new inductor. The higher inductance creates significantly stronger sparks. As a result we get clearly recognizable, deep and smooth lines. As a reminder, the graphic is only 15 times 16 mm small. It is now clear without a doubt, the inductance of the circuit has a significant influence on spark formation. Since the electrode wear is automatically compensated for with the new mechanics, I can now try to process the lines at a lower speed in order to create a deeper engraving. Here the feed rate is set to just 0.1mm per second, meaning the engraving will take 10 times as long, which will be more than 50 minutes. This job is therefore also a long term test for the mechanics and electronics. The voltage is set to 5 volts. My first mechanic with wire feed works in general, but has the weak points already mentioned that should be eliminated in the next iteration. 
Another problem is that the wire is bent, which means that the engraved lines don't always go where the file says they should. In the upcoming mechanics, some more ball bearings will ensure that the wire is straightened. I have also ordered other current sensors and I will wind more coils to further investigate the influence of inductance on the erosion process. When it comes to software, there are also many approaches to optimizing. I will investigate at what frequency the hammer is hammering or should be hammering. So there is still a lot to be done. Anyone who would like to support me in my efforts to further develop this new form of EDM can purchase a Homo Faciens coin on my website. Many thanks to all the great people who have already invested in my project using this hard currency. The engraving of the Homo Faciens coin shown here took almost an hour and is therefore not going into serious production. If you are interested, make me an offer. The lines can be seen here under the microscope compared to a piece of 0.2mm tungsten wire used as electrode. As always, Further information as well as the 3D files and the software used can be found on my website. Have a click! Thanks for watching and I'll be back!